Moving to a new city can be extremely overwhelming. Particularly when you're making a big move, there's a lot to consider. What are the best neighborhoods? Where's the best place to live? And what area is going to be the best fit for me? And that's just one aspect of it. And then you get into the lifestyle components, more of the pros and cons. And that's exactly what we're gonna cover here today. This is one of my favorite videos to make, and I've done a couple before, but this here is your pros and cons of living in Charlotte, North Carolina, 2024 edition. I've already done the homework for you, so sit back, Listen up and take some notes if that's your thing. I know exactly how overwhelming this can feel because a little over five years ago, we packed up everything we owned, moved 500 miles from Little Old Hubbard, Ohio to Charlotte, North Carolina. Funny enough, not everything managed to make it onto that trip because we had too much to fit in the truck. So we actually had to deliver some of it to my mother-in-law's garage and sadly, it is still there five and a half years later. If you're watching this video, I want you to know, eventually we are going to get that stuff out of your garage. It's just a matter of time. I keep thinking I need to call like Pods or one of those container shipping companies and have them send everything here, but then it would be in my garage, so here we are. Well, getting back on track, we learned a ton from our relocation and I'm about to share with you the top five things we love about Charlotte, North Carolina, and the five things we wish we could live without. If we've never met before, I am Kristen Rapoli, a licensed real estate agent here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. If that interests you, be sure to reach out all of my contact information is down below. My husband Jason and I post videos every single week about what it's like to live, work, and play in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you like the sound of that, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you can keep tabs on everything that's happening in the Queen City. Now let's get right into this list of pros and cons. As you know, every town, every city has both, right? There are always going to be some things you absolutely love and other things you wish would kind of just go away. That's exactly what we're highlighting in this video. So the very first pro on our list is the thing that brings almost everyone to the South and that is weather. I mean, if you live up North and you're anything like us, you're probably getting sick of the snow right about now. Well, we haven't seen a flurry in Charlotte in about two years. Though we do experience all four seasons here in the Queen City, our winters are relatively mild. This is our sixth winter here in Charlotte, and for each of the first four years, we did experience some snowfall. However, it disappears relatively quickly because as you can see in this graph, the average winter highs are between 50 and 55 degrees. For us, moving from a place that had long winters, sometimes it was gray and dreary for months on end, to a place that has about 214 days of sunshine per year was a phenomenal move. Maybe you can relate if you currently live in the Northern United States. We get so many transplants here from places like Seattle, Chicago, Ohio, and New York. Hey, if that's you, let's work together to make this winter your last winter with a snow shovel. You can call, text, or email, or if you look down in the description below, you'll find a link to my Calendly so that you can schedule a Zoom call that fits your schedule and we can start the ball rolling on your journey to Charlotte. Speaking of weather, we also don't see a lot of those natural disasters that just sort of pop up like earthquakes or tornadoes. And we also don't experience much by way of hail either. What we will get are some beautiful thunderstorms that pop through during the summer months that I absolutely love. Probably the worst weather phenomenon you'll get hit with here in the Charlotte area are the byproducts of the hurricanes. It's pretty rare that you're gonna get directly hit with a hurricane, but sometimes you will get lots and lots and lots of wind and rain as a byproduct of a hurricane being close by. When this happens, you're usually going to get some warning. Generally speaking, you have at least several days advanced warning 
if you're going to experience bad weather from a hurricane. You are going to have some time to prepare when bad weather is coming. And when I say prepare, please remember this is what I'm talking about. When bad weather is coming, everybody in town is running to the store and buying eggs, milk, and bread. Now, I'm not exactly sure why this is, but I promise if you wait too long and head to the store, those shelves are going to be empty. Is it possible that everyone is planning to make French toast while the storms are rolling through? I'm not sure, but I will say this, you don't wanna be out of those items if a storm is coming. In case our weather doesn't have you sold, let's move on to pro number two, jobs and employment. We have a booming jobs market here in the Queen City. For example, we are home to 18 of the Fortune 1000 companies. In fact, Charlotte is home to the majority of our state's Fortune 1000 companies, which says a lot about the economy here. And with over 90,000 people employed in the financial industry, Charlotte is a major U.S. banking center, second only to New York City. Many large banks have a big presence here, including Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Truist, and many other ones you probably haven't even heard of. There's a lot more that Charlotte has to offer with healthcare jobs, tech jobs, opportunities all over the place. And if you are self-employed, North Carolina is one of the most small business friendly states in the nation. As for healthcare, Atrium and Novant both have huge presences here with tens of thousands of jobs across pharmacies, medical centers, hospitals, and more. Besides that, our unemployment rate is lower than the national average and our jobs growth outpaces the national average. As you can probably see, there is a ton of opportunity here for you in Charlotte, North Carolina. For our third pro, I'm going here. Charlotte is known as a transplant city, a true melting pot when it comes to cultures and traditions. There are people here from all over the world. In fact, it's actually rare to find a native Charlottean in a random group of people. So rare, in fact, that they are referred to as unicorns. One consequence to this is that people are very friendly and welcoming to newcomers likely because they remember being the newcomer themselves. Charlotte is known as a warm and welcoming city. You go to restaurants, you go to parks, you're seeing people and they're waving to you, they're very friendly. It just feels like a community. Even when you're in the city, people are just so friendly. The Southern hospitality that you hear about really rings true. Everyone that I've helped move here, when they come to visit for the first time and they go out and experience this for themselves, they are seeing this and asking me, is this how people really are here? And I love just letting them know that that is Southern hospitality at its finest. There's really no way to explain it until you've experienced it for yourself. Just a quick side note to this, because I know you're out there doing your own homework as well. If you're out visiting Facebook groups or blogs and you're leaving comments about moving to the area, if you receive some not so friendly replies to those comments, just remember that the people hiding behind their keyboards are not necessarily representative of all of the people who live here. So don't let that stop you or change your plans, at least without visiting in person first. My personal experiences over the last five and a half years have been purely positive in the friendliness department. The number four pro on our list is activities and entertainment. What I'm saying here is that there is a lot to do in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes, Charlotte is a pretty notable hub for entertainment. We have professional sports teams, an active theater, live music and art scene. There are always events to attend. Let's start by talking about sports. Charlotte is home to the Carolina Panthers, the Charlotte Hornets, the new Major League Soccer team, Charlotte FC. We have Charlotte Checkers, Charlotte Knights. We've pretty much got you covered on all of the sports. If you're more of a golf fanatic, Charlotte boasts numerous 
public and private golf courses, including Quail Hollow, which hosts the PGA Tours Wells Fargo Championship. The city does have a variety of public and private golf courses for any skill level, including some pretty famous ones like the Trump National Golf Course. And if you know anything about Charlotte, you must know that Charlotte is known as the NASCAR capital of the world. NASCAR and racing in general are huge here. Everybody knows or has been to the Z-Max Dragway or the Charlotte Motor Speedway right in Concord. You'll see festivals and events that go on throughout the year here. It truly is a part of the culture in the Queen City. We even have the NASCAR Hall of Fame here. If sports aren't your thing, don't you worry, there's more. How about the PNC Pavilion, which is an open air concert center? Coming up this year, you can see Alanis Morissette, Janet Jackson, Third Eye Blind, Creed, The New Kids on the Block, and many, many others. Still not convinced? We've got the Blumenthal Downtown, Ovens Auditorium, and Bojangles Coliseum, all of which host amazing events in sports, music, arts, and theater. Plus, we have amazing museums like the Mint Museum and the Levine Museum. Now, in addition to that, there's tons of outdoor activities to enjoy as well. Charlotte is made up of a plethora of parks and greenways. That's right, we have greenways that are about to connect in the entirety of Charlotte. Miles and miles and miles of greenways for you to enjoy. And of course, we've got the largest man-made lake on the East Coast, Lake Norman, and all of the fun lake activities that go along with that. Besides Lake Norman, we've also got two other local lakes, Lake Wiley and Mountain Island Lake as well as the Catawba River. If you enjoy being close to the water, being anywhere on the western side of Charlotte is going to be a perfect place for you. We also have the Daniel Stowe Botanical Gardens, Camp North End, Carowinds, and of course, the Whitewater Center, where you can go kayaking, whitewater rafting, rock climbing, biking, zip lining, and even do obstacle courses. They even have beer on tap in numerous locations and two on-site restaurants. If you want something fun to do, you're going to find something here in Charlotte. I created this map of things to do in Charlotte that is linked down in the description. If you're planning a visit, I encourage you to check out some of the things on this list. I barely scratched the surface today. And finally, pro number five. Charlotte's geographical location has got to be one of the biggest draws to the area. If you love to go hiking or camping, or in the winter you like snowboarding or skiing, the mountains in Asheville are just two hours away. Along the way, you'll find some beautiful waterfalls and hiking trails. And during the fall months, you can enjoy some leaf peeping along the Blue Ridge Parkway. It is so pretty and we get a ton of tourism to the state just for that alone. It's so incredible that it's right in your backyard. If the beach is more your scene, you can get there in about three to three and a half hours if you wanna visit Myrtle Beach or Wilmington. If you've got more time to truly explore the beaches, between North and South Carolina, you'll find almost 500 miles of coastline. The Outer Banks has historic lighthouses and the Wright Brothers National Memorial. Myrtle Beach has family-friendly resorts and golfing. And Charleston has historic downtown areas and beautiful gardens that you've got to check out. Maybe the urban scene is more your style and you want to visit new cities, new areas, and you want to explore and do new things. There are a lot of great urban areas that you can drive to in just a few hours. Nashville's only two hours away. Raleigh's only two and a half hours. Charleston, three and a half hours. Atlanta, four hours. And with easy access to the Charlotte Douglas International Airport, you can fly to New York in two hours, DC in less than two hours, Miami, Florida in two and a half hours. Speaking of air travel, how lucky are we to be so close to one of the nation's best airports? And on top of that, we also have access to a regional airport with some cheaper flight options. I wanted to keep my list to just five, so I didn't even get to mention the amazing post-secondary education opportunities, low taxes or low cost of living, but I do have other videos on these topics that you might find valuable, so be sure to peep my channel after you finish this video 
and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the new content. And if you've heard the pros of living in Charlotte and you're all ready to take the plunge, go ahead and reach out. My information is all on the screen for you. You can call, text, or email, or down in the description, you can find a link to my Calendly. You can jump on my schedule and we can have a Zoom call together. I wanna to mention another video I created recently, the Ultimate Charlotte Relocation Guide. If you're thinking about making a move, be sure to watch this video because I've already done the homework for you. All right, Kristen, now that you've shared all the pros about living in Charlotte, it's time to go into the cons you were talking about. And y'all, I wanna share transparently with you because it's not perfect living in Charlotte, just like where you live. There's always something that might bother you, right? My goal here is to share that and I'm going to get deep. As a bonus at the end of the video, we're gonna get into crime because it is a question that people ask. They say, hey, what's going on with crime? What do I need to be aware of? And I want you to have all the information you need before making your move to Charlotte. All right, you ready? Our first con is going to sound familiar because it was also a pro, and that is weather. Now I'm primarily referring to humidity. Welcome to the South. Now here's the cool thing. Nearly every building you walk into, whether it be a home, a business, whatever, is probably gonna have air conditioning, and air conditioning is the ultimate key to surviving humid weather. Here's another thing to keep in mind. You can also be conscious of what you're wearing. Cotton and linen fabrics are going to offer more breathability and therefore be a little bit more comfortable when it comes to those sweaty days. And you should for sure avoid polyester, especially in the summertime. Trust me, you will regret it. So yes, with the humidity, things can get a little sticky and your hair is not going to appreciate it, but your skin will thank you. While Charlotte itself is not super prone to any sort of natural disaster, you will see tropical storms give us a lot of rain indirectly. For instance, during Hurricane Ian, after it went across Florida and went into the Atlantic Ocean, it then boomeranged into the South Carolina coast and hit Myrtle Beach moderately hard. And by the time it got to Charlotte, it really didn't have any strength left to the storm, but there was a significant amount of rain. And so during the hurricane season, there will sometimes be days or weeks where we get a significant amount of rain as a result of those tropical storms further south. Speaking of rain, we do tend to get quite a bit of rain in the winter. So although we rarely get snow, it is possible and likely that we'll experience some ice. If it rains during the day and then hits freezing temperatures at night, you might be in for a slippery morning and you should definitely start the car a little early to get rid of some of that frost. I'm just taking a tiny detour here to mention allergies, even though it's not exactly the same as weather. Our springtime is going to have pollen, lots of pollen. If you are particularly sensitive to seasonal allergies, Charlotte in springtime might not be fun for you. My middle child especially has bad allergies and he sneezes constantly during that time of year. And there will be many mornings where you go out and see your car coated in yellow dust. Be very careful about leaving your windows open when that's going on. And that's going to lead us to con number two, bugs, wildlife, and pests. First, let's talk about mosquitoes. Where you have humidity and moisture, you are unfortunately going to also have mosquitoes. That's just the nature of the beast. No one really knows why God created mosquitoes because from what I can tell, they're just here to chew us up and make us itch but it looks like they're here for the long haul. There are, of course, some ways to avoid mosquitoes, one of which is bug repellent, but I will tell you, don't worry, they're not gonna be following you in swarms. If you're gonna be out in the woods, maybe on the greenways or the parks, you're going to have to deal with these. But just going out and about on a normal day, they're probably not gonna be anywhere around you. But I'm forewarning you, they are here. Another pest that loves humidity, termites. If you're moving to the south from an area that does not have termites, they might frighten you. The good news is we have fantastic pest inspectors that we can call out and have them check the home you're purchasing to make sure that you're aware of the termite situation. And if the home does have termites, they can be treated. 
whenever needed, I can connect you to a couple exterminators so you can call around and get a quote. And if necessary, we can also have somebody take a look at any wood that's been destroyed. And if there's damage to the wood, usually that can be repaired as well. The most important thing is catching it early. In fact, it's not a bad idea to get a termite bond, which is kind of like a warranty against termites. The exterminator will pre-treat and maintain the areas where termites like to live. Keeping your home termite free is a heck of a lot cheaper than treating for them later. This next pest is the one I probably get the most questions about, snakes. Because of our warm and humid weather, snakes can be pretty common here in the Carolinas. Just a quick note, I've lived here for five and a half years and I've only ever seen one snake face to face. And he was just a little guy too. If you live in a subdivision or a neighborhood, you're less likely to encounter them than say if you live on a wooded lot or have a lot of trees or underbrush, but they can be found in neighborhoods too. North Carolina is home to six species of venomous snakes. The one that is most common that you're most likely to see is going to be the copperhead. Generally speaking, a bite from a copperhead will be painful but not fatal, and you should always seek medical attention if you get bitten by a snake. If this is a huge fear for you, but you still want to make the move to Charlotte, I recommend checking out some of the snake identification Facebook groups because educating yourself is key and oftentimes the snakes you'll see are relatively harmless. So knowing in advance what to look out for will help greatly. Also, if you have a major fear of snakes, you might want to be very intentional about moving to a place without woodlands around and keep your yard free of any potential homes for these critters. They do prefer to hide, so if you eliminate hiding places in your yard, they'll be more likely to move on. So yes, we do have some irritating pests in and around Charlotte, North Carolina, so just keep that in perspective. If you are diligent about pest control, you should be fine. The third con on our list is going to be transportation. So for this section, we're gonna be talking about public transportation, we're gonna talk about the roads, we're gonna talk about everything you need to know, including the absolute worst spots you want to avoid during rush hour. Now, if you're moving here from a major city, you may be used to just walking down to the corner and wherever you are, you can catch a bus or a train or something of that nature. Well, Charlotte isn't quite there yet. I will say Charlotte is making strides to either match or surpass what you'll find in other major cities. Charlotte is preparing for major growth because we're already seeing it and feeling its effects. So they are making that a priority. In fact, there's a full rail line that has been installed and completed that goes all the way from North Charlotte to South Charlotte. But of course, Rome wasn't built in a day and neither is this. This was actually many years in the making. The light rail even has a stop right here in the middle of UNC Charlotte. Imagine being a college kid and being able to go right down into downtown in just like 15 or 20 minutes. It's honestly phenomenal. In addition to that, Charlotte also has a trolley system. The trolley system works on electricity, making it even better for a bustling city like Charlotte. All those good things aside, let's go back to the premise that Charlotte's public transportation is not quite up to par compared to other major cities. For this reason, Charlotte is very car dependent. One of the first things that I noticed when I moved to Charlotte is that the entire street system for Charlotte is not laid out in nice neat rows and columns like a grid like you see in some other major cities. Instead, it's laid out more like kind of a spider web layout and the spider web does have the circle around the outside. In our case, that's I-485, which is the loop. So you have the inner and outer loop around the city. Then you also have I-77, which is going to go from north to south through the city. And then you also have I-85, which is going to start here on the western edge of the city, go through and kind of make a turn a little bit north. Then there still are state highways and plenty of ways to get around, but those are the major thoroughfares that you want to keep in mind when you're looking at the map. Again, we'll share the worst congestion spots you need to avoid here in just a second. Yes, that's right. With growth, 
comes congestion. And there's definitely gonna be some roadblocks ahead. Like most major cities, Charlotte is not immune to traffic woes, but it's not going to even compare to places like New York, LA, or Atlanta. However, there have certainly been times where I've been on the interstate in standstill traffic. Now, the good thing is there are only a handful of places where that major slowdown traffic is going to occur. But because Charlotte is such a commuter city, unless you're gonna be taking the light rail or a bus, you're going to need a car. That's going to be your primary way of getting around. So you remember earlier I mentioned, when you move here, everybody's super kind and genuine. And that's just one of the wonderful things about the South. I don't know what happens, but when people get on the road, there's so much craziness. Like people will just merge four lanes of traffic like it's nothing. You're going to see people speeding, people who don't stay in the correct lane while making U-turns. It can honestly get messy out there. And the construction is everywhere because they're trying to widen the roads and expand the infrastructure because nobody could predict the mass influx of people to the area. Because again, the pros of Charlotte at least for a lot of people, are going to outweigh the cons. All right, so let's take a look at this map of the traffic patterns, and you are going to be able to see exactly where the worst congestion spots are going to be. Some of the worst congestion spots you're going to see are gonna be on this northern end of 77, going from basically from Charlotte into Huntersville, Cornelius, Davidson, and then into Mooresville. Now it used to be a real hot spot for terrible traffic, but it has been lightened significantly by putting in the toll lanes. And if you have your easy pass, it actually does give you some discounts. Personally, I've never seen where the toll lane is congested at all. So if you're willing to throw a couple bucks to the local government, you can always just fly along right through there. In fact, I've, I don't think I've ever seen anyone going below 65 or 70 on the toll path portion. But on the non toll path portion, those lanes can be basically looking like a parking lot. I've certainly been stuck in those parking lots on 77 because I was trying to cheap out and save the couple dollars. I don't recommend it. It sucks. Besides that, if you're going west out of the city or into the city right along this section, there is going to be a congestion point just outside of the 485 loop getting onto 85 westbound going into Gastonia. Sure, sometimes you're gonna see accidents or things like that causing congestion, but a lot of times there's no reason for this congestion. There could be the same number of lanes, nobody's driving crazy, and it's just kind of windy going back and forth. So people break, the people behind them break even more, and then you get these traffic jams. So that's what's typically going on during these rush hour times. Plus, if you ever have inclement weather here, that is going to compound the effect of the traffic. If it's raining really excessively and the weather is really bad, then people just forget how to drive. Just stay off the roads if you can when the weather is bad. I just want you to stay safe. For con number four, I'm getting low, right down into the dirt in fact. If you're a gardener, you love to plant veggies and flowers, maybe you have dreams of homesteading, then this section is going to be important, so listen up. Basically, Charlotte is sitting on a bed of granite covered in red clay and about two inches of topsoil. Now, if you've never worked with red clay before, it can be extremely difficult to work with. Clay-based soils are hard and dense, and they tend to expand and contract with weather changes. We really only have a couple inches of topsoil, and beneath that is just going to be this red clay. Many people that plant in the area are generally going to be supplementing with other things, like they might be bringing in fertilizer or bringing in topsoil from other places if they're doing some gardening work or landscaping work. So the red clay is not avoidable, but you can overcome it. Another factor that is impacted by this red clay is that it retains water, so drainage is very slow, which could lead to flooding. When we have extremely rainy weather, flash flooding is a serious issue to watch out for. And one more factor that our clay soil impacts is something that you may not even consider, basements. Often when people are looking to relocate to Charlotte, they are shocked to discover how rare basement homes are. 
There are several reasons for this, and one of them is the soil content. Because clay soils take a long time to drain after being exposed to rain, and also take a long time to warm up, they are inhospitable as they surround the foundation of your home. When we first moved to the area, I always thought it was unusual that no one was parking in their garages. Then one day, I noticed someone's garage door open, and it was full of boxes and equipment. I suddenly realized that the garages are the basements here. If you're used to having a big basement, this could take some adjustment. Now, I'm not saying there are no basements in the Charlotte area, but they are far more rare than in other places. And if you're searching for a home with a basement, you're more likely to be paying a premium for that extra space. So last, but certainly not least, on our list of cons for Charlotte, North Carolina, is that it is growing quickly. We actually surpassed the million mark, meaning we had a million people living in Charlotte just a few years ago. Some people even anticipate that Charlotte will be the same size as Atlanta within the next couple decades. I'm not sure about that, but we do have over 150 people moving to Charlotte every single day. Of course, not everyone who moves here stays. Some people leave as well. This tends to be a conversation you hear a lot if you are looking in Facebook groups or blogs about moving to Charlotte, because the people who've lived here for their whole lives remember Charlotte being a charming small town, and they loved that charming small town. And as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that charming small town changes. And then what we end up seeing happen is that people no longer are just simply moving into the city center of Charlotte. As a result of that, some of these beautiful towns, communities, cities, now they are growing exponentially as well. And now that opens the doorway to new opportunities for businesses and homes to be built. That means these places are getting more and more crowded by the day, and so are the schools. Speaking of schools, I want to quickly mention that if you move to a location based solely on the school you're zoned for, you need to be aware that with growing populations, school zones can and will be shifted. I've heard of people moving into a neighborhood because they specifically wanted their children to attend a particular school, only to find out that the school enforced an enrollment freeze based on being overpopulated. So while it's a con that Charlotte is growing, let's face it, we can't stop growth. But we can focus on the positive and look at the fact that Charlotte's growth is positively impacting the surrounding areas. Think about it like this. If Charlotte weren't so incredible, people wouldn't be flocking here. It's such a cool city and area, and that's why we're experiencing the growth. All right, so I want to throw out this bonus for you, and I'm not calling it a pro or a con. I just want to be transparent with you. I hold a real estate license, so I can't legally tell you if a place is safe or not. I know it sucks. Trust me. That's just the reality, but I can share with you resources that you can use to do your own research. All right, so the first thing I can do is share with you how I personally feel about living in the Charlotte area. And here's what I want you to know. I don't feel unsafe in Charlotte or in Union County where I live. There's this interactive crime map Mecklenburg County, where Charlotte is located, utilizes crimemapping.com. It'll allow you to type in an address, a zip code, and you can see all of the recorded crime that is happening in that area. It's a really cool tool, and most cities do have a similar tool that you can use. If you just go to Google, you can find yours. This part's important. Don't take my word for it. Go look at the map. If you're looking at moving to a specific area, type in the zip code. You're going to see all the crime that has happened in the area, which is great information. But then the other step you must take is looking at the area where you currently live so you have something to compare it to. Because oftentimes people will come to me and be like, our place is super safe. And then we'll look it up and come to find out things are very similar, right? And now I'm not saying that Charlotte doesn't have its fair share of crime, nor am I saying it has a lot of crime because it doesn't. So I'm just sharing this tool with you. It's public information. I'm not telling you that it's safe or it's not safe. I'm just sharing the data with you so that you can do your own homework. 
I hope you got tremendous value out of today's video. And if you did, be sure to hit the like button. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you know someone who's considering a move to the Charlotte area, share this video with them. If you have comments or questions, be sure to drop it into the boxes below. I want to hear what you have to say. What are your pros and cons about the Charlotte area? Do you live here? Have you visited? What are some of the things you've seen? We live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we would be honored to assist with your move. Whether you're already living here in Charlotte and you're looking to relocate, or if you want to move to the area, we're ready to help you with anything you're looking to do. Buy, sell, invest. We are here for you. Give us a call or schedule a Zoom today. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.